Hello, just testing my microphone. Can you hear me? We can hear you well, Chengitai. Great, thanks a lot. Uh, hi, uh, testing if my microphone is working. Carlos Afonso. <clears throat> yes, Carlos, we can hear you. Great, great. So we will wait two more minutes um, for more people to come. There's currently 39, so hopefully a few more will join us. Okay, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is the second day of the MAG meeting of the June Open Competitions and MAG meeting. Uh, just a few statements that we have to do before the start of the meeting is that this meeting is being recorded and transcribed and also live streamed through the IGF YouTube channel. Um, the links to the agenda and the transcription and documents and pre recorded videos are available on the IGF front page. Uh, please make sure that your microphone is muted at all times. 
And if you want to make an intervention, please use the online request system. Um, the link is being pasted into the chat right now, and it's also available on the front page of the IGF website. Um, for some reason, if you cannot log into the floor request system, please send a message um, in the chat and we will put your name in the queue. When it's your turn to take the floor, the chair will call your name and give you the floor. If you, and please, if you can, please switch on your video, as the chair said, um, it improves the atmosphere and it's, and it's also very helpful for the interpreters. Uh, please start your intervention by saying your name and affiliation. And also, can you please speak at a measured pace, not too fast, not too slow. Uh, this helps the people whose native language is not English and also helps the scribes. Please also try and keep your intervention short. And one other thing that this is a MAG meeting, so MAG members do have preference. If you are not a MAG member and still want to take the floor, um, yes, you're free to re request for the floor and the chair will call your name according to um, the situation. Once you've finished your intervention, please remember to mute your microphone again. And I think that's everything I have to say beforehand. And with that, I'd like to call on the chair, Anir Estoysen, to start the meeting. Um, thanks very much, um, Shangatai. Um, and thanks uh, to, to everyone for all the work you did overnight. Welcome to the second last day of this Marathon MAG meeting um, of IGF 2020, the second meeting. Um, so I'm going to say it officially, good morning, good evening, and, and good afternoon, depending um, where you are. Welcome to the observers and the MAG members, the secretariat, and to our scribes who have just confirmed that they can stay until um, 15.30 UTC and then we will lose the scribes. So if we run late, we, we will lose our scribes. Um, so everyone, what we've done, uh, myself and the Secretariat, is we adapted the, the agenda a little bit today based on the experience of yesterday. So I want to just run through it with you. We've just adjusted the time allocations and the task a little bit. This plenary session, which will run from 1300 to 1430, so, so for an hour and a half, rather than the initial hour we allocated. And um, this is where you will report back on your work. Um, thanks very much, everyone, for I was watching and stayed online. You all worked really hard yesterday. Um, and then we will look at um, various other things that we need to discuss today. So we'll have the, the, um, the reports from the breakouts, we'll display the final list and the sub-themes, um, and if there's anything else that you wanted to raise, you can, based on your discussions. I want to note here, it's very important for everyone, I think just to reiterate, that this is a working meeting for MAG members, so I will give MAG members the, the, the floor before observers. But observers, if you want to request the floor, please do. If there's time um, after MAG members have spoken, we'll give you the floor. And thanks to those observers who wanted to um, sit in on the breakout groups yesterday. And also thank you to the MAG members for your willingness to be so inclusive by allowing observers to, to join your, your breakout groups as observers. So um, just one more little reminder. Again, I think, Shangata, you did mention it. Please mute your, your mics if you are not speaking. Otherwise, we will have to mute you. Okay, so after this session, Luis, if you can just go down a little bit. Um, okay, I think, Luis, this is not the correct agenda, is it? No, it's not. Sorry, we, we changed the agenda and I think somehow um, we have a little break in between, in the revised agenda. So um, while, while Louise brings up the revised annotated agenda, what we've done is to just put in a 10 minute break 
between plenary session two and plenary session um, one. Uh, plenary session three. The purpose of that just being that we can kind of underline um, uh, the workshop um, evaluation and selection process. And just to give you all randomly into groups, just time to spend 10 minutes together, just to, to talk, to, to, to just make sure that everyone is on track and happy with the decisions about the workshops. Wei Min, I see you are with us. Um, welcome. It's really good to have you with us. Wei Min from UNDESA in New York. Yes, hi, so, Andrew. Just to say hello to all. <laughs> Thank do you, you want to say something while we're waiting no, for the No, the, no, 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 no. Please, window. please go ahead. I'm just listening in. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, so we'll have that. Um, let's not um, panic. Louise will put it on for us soon. There'll be the, the first plenary on workshop proposals, report backs, finalizing that decision. And then we'll have a very short break, automatically clustering you randomly into breakout groups, just for you to informally check in with one another and, and kind of celebrate the, the, the finalization of what has been a huge amount of work for MAG members, which is the workshop evaluation process. We will then go into plenary session three. That plenary session is where we are beginning to look at main sessions. And we'll have some, some discussion and plenary. We've prepared some um, slides for you just to summarize uh, proposals that are put on the table thus far. And I am just, good, that's, that's the agenda. Thanks, Louise. If you can just make it a little bit bigger, I would appreciate that. Um, um, thanks very much. Okay, if you can move to uh, plenary session um, three. So the output from the first plenary session, pl pl plenary session two, will be the final list of workshops um, and sub-themes. Um, and this is the workshop li list of workshops that we will, will um, then have to put through a second round of vetting, where we'll ask proposers to um, to tell us how they're going to run their session as a virtual session. Okay, so to jump back to plenary session three, um, we'll have a general discussion about main session ideas that are already on the table. We'll give you some time to just think about that, about how to approach these main sessions. Um, but I think we really do not want to spend too much time. As you'll see, there's only from 1440 to 1530 UTC allocated to that. Um, you know, so that's 50 minutes allocated to that. And hopefully we can make it shorter. The idea being that you do the substance of your discussion in breakout groups, um, not in the main session. We, we just want to raise all the issues, look at the big picture. Um, and then you'll break out into four groups. You all know um, which time slot you've been assigned to, uh, who your facilitator and rapporteur will be. Thanks very much to the volunteer uh, facilitators and rapporteurs. And then we will break into those groups. The task of those groups will be to come up with proposals for topics for main session, to also look at, um, at the design of these main sessions, if you can, and the, the scheduling of main sessions, because with a virtual IGF, we are going to have to be quite creative about making sure that we schedule the main sessions in a way that is, is complementary to the program. Um, and I think that really covers it. Um, Louise, can you just move a little bit? Um, down, thanks very much. Yes, so that's really it. The Zoom rooms have been created. We won't come back for a plenary. We'll close when you break up into your, your breakout groups. This will be different from yesterday because you're not going to be automatically um, clustered into the breakout groups. You have information which has been made available to you um, to tell you which breakout room um, uh, you need to join, which breakout room and what time zone. So I know that's been a bit lengthy, but any questions on the agenda? Louise, if you can show the speakers queue and I'm going to look at the list. Oh, I have another request for you. I just remembered. Um, please, MAG members, can you speak? It's very difficult 
um, for everyone, including myself and the Secretariat, to follow input in the chat. So I really want to urge you um, to take um, the floor, unless you have some reason that you cannot, but just so that we try and keep the discussion um, in, the, in the main body of the meeting. Um, of course, you can still use the chat session, but I do really encourage you to speak when you want to make it. Okay, I'm trying to see. I see the speaking queue is empty. I'm checking chat. No issues there. Uh -huh. Shomek, I think you are, you are with us again from, from, um, from Warsaw. Good to have you. So welcome to you as well, to our um, host country um, for 2021. Hi, hi everyone. Hi. Yes. I think we can A start. Pleasure, pleasure being with you. Pleasure being with you. Please, you must just jump in if you want to say anything, by the way. So I don't see any questions. Um, I assume that our agenda is now adopted and therefore I am declaring this meeting open. Um, hi, Andrea. Sorry, can I come yes. in? Yes, go ahead. And I see Ananda has put her hand up as well. So go ahead and after you, Ananda. Okay, hi, my name is Adama Jalo from the Gambia, part-time MAG member. Um, sorry, I couldn't take the queue as Andrea mentioned. And then you could just jump in. It's just a question that I have regarding the breakout sessions that we are going to go straight. I was wondering if I'm a bit lost on that side, if um, Louis could just give us a brief explanation on how we are going to um, do that get to uh thanks Adana. it's a very useful question because Thank there you. were questions on the list as well i know anya was responding to them so um let's let's first hear from ananda and then secretariat if you can respond to adama's question just to give very clear instructions of how the the breakout will happen at the end of plenary session three ananda thank you madam chair Ananda Raj Khanal, uh, government stakeholder from Nepal. Um, uh, yesterday's uh, agenda, there was uh, a topic called uh, planning, but we didn't discuss planning, uh, uh, IGF planning as such. Is there uh, any time slot that we will we'll, we'll be discussing this IGF planning? That's my question. Thank you. Ananda, are you referring to planning of the virtual IGF? I mean, everything yes. we do yes. actually is a form yes, of IGF. IGF. How many, how many, you know, many, many issues associated with planning? So, so um, Ananda, um, in your breakout groups today, I think it's in the agenda. If you can begin to look at, at virtual, um, the implications of doing main sessions um, for virtual IGF. And um, the Secretariat I, and I actually discussed this uh, this morning. We thought, should we, should we ask you to do more um, planning for the virtual IGF during this MAG meeting? And we, we assessed that and then we came to the conclusion that it's better not to try and pack too much into this meeting. Um, you know it's a virtual IGF, so when you make the decisions about main sessions, you can take that into account. Um, similarly with the workshops, uh, we, you know, we still need to look at what will be the second round of vetting. But we thought we should rather um, give everyone a chance to, to absorb um, some of the ideas and implications of having a virtual IGF. There's a very dynamic discussion going on in the list at the moment about, about the ideas, the different ways in which a virtual IGF can take place. So we decided to not put too much virtual IGF planning into this um, meeting, we can have a call in, in uh, 10 days or so to do that. Um, but rather to focus on what the original goals of this meeting were, which was number one, um, final selection of, of workshop proposals, sub-themes, and main sessions. So, um, but I'm open to, to suggestions for us to, to change that. We will have time tomorrow. And I, and, you know, and I suspect, because we're making good progress of our work, that we probably can spend some time talking about it tomorrow. Any other points on this uh, question? And, and as I said, I'm encouraging you to speak, not to use the chat. So I don't see any other hands or... Um, no one in the speaking queue. Secretariat, can you please respond to Adama's question um, about giving very clear instructions of how 
today's breakouts will work. Uh, thank you, Henriette. So I'm going to, to answer that. Um, so you can see me now. Basically, uh, all of you, I'm going to share my screen, that, okay? Uh, basically, you should have received a link to this document I'm going to share now. Uh -huh, this one. Okay. You are seeing it. So here are the four groups, uh, according to the Doodle poll that was done. Uh, that uh, where you were assigned, okay? So the first one is at four o'clock today, UTC, then eight o'clock, four o'clock in, uh, in the morning for tomorrow and eight o'clock in the morning or UTC. And here we have the facilitators, okay? So basically here, there are the four links you have to connect to, to attend these meetings. It's like this meeting, so you just con click there and then you access, access to these meetings, the one you are assigned here. That's all, very easy. The only instructions are for the facilitators. So this is for Roberto Sombrana, uh, Paul Rauni and Jutta, uh, Juliana Harcianti, and I don't know who is the facilitator of group four, but basically <clears throat> you have to start the meeting. And host the meeting, but you don't need to do anything uh, special and you should already know how to start the meeting. Otherwise I can private chat with you during this meeting, but uh, um, you, should, you should know it. Basically, you click here, but you have to log in with this credential here, and the password I will send to you um, in the chat. I know Robert already knows it, Yuta also knows it, uh, Juliana, I'm not sure I'm going to chat it to you, and if you have any doubt of starting the meeting, you just tell me in the chat uh, today. Okay, but you should be okay because you have already host meetings before. And for the rest of the people, you just click on the link, and then you access the meeting. The meeting is automatically recorded and that's all. Hope that clarifies. I will be happy to answer questions also in private chat, okay? Thanks very much, Louise. Um, any other questions? I don't see any. So um, on that note, um, let's start with our plenary. And I'm sorry, something happened with the agenda. We did add a, gray, a break um, that is not here now, but at the end of this session, um, there'll be a 10 minute break. Um, it's fine, you know, we, we, we will just remind you when it happens. So at this point, um, breakout groups, are you ready to report? Let's start today in um, um, reverse alphabetical order. So let's start, well, not, no, in alphabetical order. Let's start with data. Data, are you ready to report? Secretariat, we have prepared um, a summary. Um, are you ready with that? We've, we have prepared a kind of a visual um, compilation of all your breakout group reports. So if possible, um, if we can put that on screen. And uh, Maria Paz, if you can get ready to report in the meantime. Sure. Secretary, are you able to do that or? Um... Yes, we will do that immediately. Good. So let's just pause a minute and breathe and soon it will be on screen. Thanks, you know, I really have to thank everyone for your diligence in, in reporting and working. It makes life much simpler for us. Okay, Maria Paz, please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, this is Maria Paz Canales. I am a MAC member uh, representative of Brulac Region Civil Society. I am one of the co-facilitators of the data track uh, together with Chennai Chair. Um, so we went uh, yesterday to the discussion in the breakout group, uh, taking into consideration all the feedback and comments that we received in the plenary session uh, uh, from the other MAC members, and uh, mainly also taking into consideration the overall number uh, of uh, 
proposal that we were requested to, to do, that it was increased from the original instruction provided uh, for the first uh, screening. So from 12 sessions that we uh, were uh, supposed to select in the first round, uh, we moved to uh, sorry, 17 sessions. Uh, that allows us the possibility to uh, go back in some of the decisions that were uh, some kind of contended or, or not so clear for the rest of the MAC members. So uh, in that regard, uh, because it was an issue uh, very polemic yesterday, I want to clarify that we reduced the number of proposal of mergers. Um, we, we will be sticking only with one uh, proposal of merger. Sorry, here in the screen there is a mistake because uh, still in the number one say merger with workshop 75 and this, that is withdrawn. Sorry, it's more clear down where, where the written explanation is there. So we are not proposing any merger for the uh, top 10% uh, uh, high scored sessions uh, in the track. We are just proposing one merger that it's uh, regarding the session 182 and 318. Uh, this is the discussion regarding uh, privacy implication uh, with COVID-19. We think that this session still it's possible to merge uh, with no major difficulties because each one of the proposals only have um, uh, three speakers uh, uh, announced. So uh, in logistic terms, it will be relatively easy to, to, to try to reach the, the proposers and, and to uh, make them to work together. And there is complementarity in the diversity perspective. Both sessions were very good, were high uh, scored. Uh, improving uh, the report that I did yesterday, now uh, I included also all the scores so the, the MAG members can more easily check on the different scores of the se uh, selection uh, that we are proposing to move forward. Uh, we will keep the proposition of moving the workshop uh, 229 as a main session, as we mentioned yesterday. Uh, can we move down, uh, please, the file? Um, and from, from the session, uh, the two, um, if, if we undo the mergers that were proposed yesterday, and with the additions already proposed yesterday, we complete a number of uh, 15 sessions. So we were in the position to pick two new ones uh, that previously were in the yellow basket to add them to the uh, green basket. So we proceed with the same criteria that we did uh, the last time. Can you scroll down a little bit more, please? please? Until the yellow part. So we proceed with the same uh, criteria that we used for the selection of the previous one. We try to identify uh, thematic gaps in the program for, for the data track. Uh, and uh, according to this criteria, and consider the, the highest score in the yellow basket, we are proposing now to include two additional sessions, uh, which are the uh, 250 Can Excel uh, Sheet uh, Have Ethics? I governance uh, in Global South. Uh, you can see there the score. Um, and the other one that will be uh, included uh, according to uh, the identification also of this uh, thematic track uh, gaps is the workshop uh, 236, that it's in the number 13 in the, in the uh, list. Uh, that it's dealing with issues regarding data flow because from the previous uh, determination, we just have one session uh, in that sub team. And now with this addition, we will have uh, two. And also this was a, a very, um, sorry, it, it, sorry. Sorry, the, the new one is not that one. The new one, it's governing cross-border data flow and sustainable development. The, the previous one was the one that I mentioned before. So the governing cross-border data flow and sustainable development is the one that it will, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I think, yeah. It's the one that uh, it will increase the diversity of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the topic of, um, cross-border uh, data issues. And this one is very interesting in our uh, opinion because um, uh, it's a, a session that is being proposed and featuring a lot of participation from SME. 
SMEs. And this is a group that in general IGF uh, tried to reach and we would like much uh, to have increased participation from them. And it's not uh, always easy to include them. So we, we think that uh, also because of this reason, it was a very good addition to the program. It has a main uh, issue uh, uh, that needs to be improved, that it, this session is currently a manual, uh, but uh, one of our, the member of our groups, um, uh, Timia uh, Shuto, she uh, kindly offered to help us uh, to uh, work on, on this issue with, with the group, with the proposal, if the final, if the final decision is to keep this uh, session in the program as we are recommending. So uh, with that, we will complete the list of 17 sessions uh, proposed from our track with, with the question mark about the main session that we are proposing, that if at the end it's not taken by the, by the MAC as a main session, we could still keep it in the track uh, as, as a session for the track. And uh, if you scroll down, Luis, you now can see the distribution uh, of the session in the sub-teams. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, which is fairly balanced now. So we have uh, uh, the, in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the different subtv identify originally, you have in the governance dimension for data-driven technologies four session, in digital identity two, in data-driven emerging technologies four, in data-driven business model, uh, we have two. Uh, in data access quality, interoperability, competition and innovation, we have three. And in the impact uh, of digital sovereignty and internet fragmentation of trust, uh, two. So that provides a very fairly distribution, um, and this is our proposal. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chennai and Maria Paz, and everyone else in the group. Thanks very much. Does anyone have any questions for this group? And Maria Paz, in response to your question about your main session, we have flagged that for discussion in, in the main session plenary after this. Thank you. So no questions, no comments. Well, I think, shall we try applauding this group for having completed their work? <laughs> I'm going to try and clap for you. I hope you can see me. So thanks very much for that. It's really, I know it wasn't, uh, it, was, it was difficult. And thanks for um, taking on board the input from, from the group yesterday. And now let's move on to environment. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Hi, everyone. Timaya here, trying to find my camera as well. Here I am. Hi. <laughs> um, so I'm uh, well, just waiting for Luis to um, share um, the document that we that we sent this morning. Here we are. Thank you, Luis. So just to give a quick overview of what happened yesterday with the Environment Working Group, um, I think we finished pretty pretty early and on time, which allowed me to jump into Maria Paz's um, group and, um, and uh, listen into the second part of their discussion. Um, thanks for that, by the way, for allowing me to do both. Um, what we did in the environment working group um, is we, we discussed um, taking on board what, what has been said in, in the main session, how many sessions should we have in this track if there are um, if they all go through our quality control um, screening and um, and how how does diversity and, and distribution of themes um, look like um, so we took on board the, um, the advice from from the chair um, and some of you yesterday that we should make sure that this um, this track is still substantial and and we have enough sessions that um, that really make it for for a track um, in the IGF program. Um, and that people who uh, feel passionate about a theme of environment in the context of digital issues and, um, and the IGF, they are still happy and they don't feel discouraged from, from applying this um, in the future. So with that said, um, I know that um, Roberto's calculation gave um, environment five slots, Ben's calculation gave environment six slots. We advise for 14 slots, so it's a bit difficult to find a good number. But what the, what the team decided is that we put forward an ideal scenario of 12 slots, um, 12 workshops. Um, these pass our 
quality scrutiny, but we advise the MAC to look through these and um, and if there needs to be more cuts, um, then that should be made in the order of, um, in the reverse order um, of the ranking. So taking from the bottom up, up cutting um, one by one. So how we look like now, um, at least if you can scroll down for me a little bit. Um, so we have um, the first um, four uh, are remain our green basket. Um, those are the ones that we have ranked um, uh, above a score, a total score of four. Um, so those should be uh, regarded as our green. Um, if we go with the sessions um, for the minimal scenario, um, we will have to have um, six uh, workshops. Um, we, there's no way for us having five because number five and number six, as you can see there, have the same exact score. So there's really no way of choosing between them. Um, so we would advise if we have to cut back to the minimum, that'd be six. Um, but going for, for, um, further, and, and I'll show that to you when we come to the diversity analysis, um, our minimum advice scenario would be to have seven sessions because that, because that um, rounds up really nicely the diversity and the themes. But as I said, and if you can scroll down um, a little bit more, um, with the next slide, these are um, the sessions that we would like to add to those um, that pass our tests. The light yellow ones are what the ones that we um, we see are good as they are. The orange ones we have comments for, but we definitely see all of these as adding um, new ideas and more diversity to the sessions. So we put it into the hands of the mag and you all uh, of how many sessions we should choose. Um, but these are the 12 that we would like to share with you. In terms of how they cluster into um, sub-themes, um, the same remain that I presented to you yesterday, and those should be um, two slides down, Luis, if you may. So this is just our red basket that we discarded, and these are the ones, um, the, the four themes uh, that we, uh, that we uh, see uh, under the environment track. I just want to point out that if we go with five or six um, uh, or even seven sessions, that fourth um, sub-theme track disappears. Um, so session 218 and 231 are in the second half of our, um, of our yellow basket. Um, so we would um, we would lose those extra perspectives uh, that focus on uh, climate change, misinformation, and knowledge sharing um, within the track. And then um, just to show you really quickly um, the diversity um, graphs of how, how how everything looks like. If you scroll down one more for me, please, that should be one more. Here, this, these are the 12 workshops that we put forward. So this is how it looks like. You see that these touch on all of the tags um, that the proposers have put forward. Um, there, the gender balance um, skews um, towards um, towards uh, females a little bit. Uh, it's not quite 50-50. Um, and um, there's a pretty good um, stakeholder group a balance um, as much as I can tell and um, the, the regional group is also um, uh, I think that that's the best we can have um, in terms of diversity uh, in, in all of these tracks. Um, if you go down one more um, you can see here um, the top six how it looks like you see that the agenda is skewed into the other uh, other angle um, there are um, the regional groups uh, are dominated by two, uh, especially uh, the, the WIOG and, and Asia Pacific, um, and that two themes are missing. But then if you add in that seventh, that is our minimal scenario, and that's one slide down. So that, and that is my last slide. If you can just move on for me, thank you. You see how that addition of that seven actually balances out in terms of gender, in terms of um, themes um, and also gives a little bit of uh, an extra diversity in terms of regions. So again, to sum it up, um, we advise that we have 12 sessions, but if we have to have less, we, we hope that we can have at least seven um, and uh, all the stats are there. Um, and I'm looking forward for the mag um, to share with us uh, your thinking on, on the numbers. Thank you. 
Thanks very much to Maya and thanks everyone else. June, you've asked for the floor. Please go ahead. Hello, June Paris, uh, MAG member, also co-chair for um, Environment. I wish to reiterate what Timia and the chair said earlier. Um, with Environment being a new um, um, track, I think we need to be, have consideration from the MAG to give us at least seven. Um, I personally would love more than that. I would love about 10. Um, so I just wish to add to that with and support Timia in the work that she did, which was um, um, very um, um, complete. Because we only had such a small amount, we were able to go through them thoroughly. So we are sure about um, the results that we came up with. And thank you very much, Timia. Thank you for all the help to the team, June and Karim and everybody in the team. Sorry, I forgot to say that. Well, thanks very much. And I think, I think yesterday I recall um, counting that we would have 14 in environment. And I think what you've done, how I understand it, is that you've used quality as a measure and you've come up with 12 that you would like to see. Um, and I see no reason at this point to, to reduce it down from, from 12. Um, is there anyone who would like to, to suggest that we reduce it? Is there a feeling that it needs to be lower? I know that we've done the proportional calculation, um, but is there any MAG member who feels that we should stick to proportional um, numbers of workshops per track? Or is there consensus that we can give uh, environment some additional um, space because it's a new track? Um, <clears throat> Henriette, may I speak? I, I Please couldn't go get. Ahead, Jutta. Just, just introduce yes. yourself and go ahead. Jutta Kroll, a MAC member in my third year uh, for the civil society. I'm from Germany. Um, I do think that uh, in relation to the overall number of 19, 12 is a bit high, <laughs> that's, but that's my gut feeling. Um, uh, also, I acknowledge that it's very important to have the environmental issues on the agenda. So I, I'm not sure how we can balance these two things, but looking at the statistics uh, and they come from the community, the workshop proposals come from the community. So uh, I do think if the, if the community really had the feeling that they need to put more uh, emphasis on that. I'm wondering why we only got 19 compared to the numbers of workshops in other tracks. So um, I'm, I'm just not sure how we can balance that. I completely understand what you say and I've already seen that the group has done a, a, a very good job in, in setting priorities. So um, uh, I just uh, would like to know how others feel that uh, in this case then we would only drop seven out of 19 if we accept 12. That's my, my two cent. Um, thanks, Jutta. Um, G, you've asked for the floor. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, sorry, I have some problem with my uh, camera, so I would just uh, uh, speak without the camera. Uh, I, I would like first to, to thank all of our uh, chairs for, for different uh, break up groups for, for all their efforts. Regarding the question you posed to us, I uh, got the same gut feeling with Utah that, uh, uh, you know, the, the quality and the proportionality uh, might be an important factor that we need to take into account. Otherwise, that would, you know, be a little bit unfair for other uh, other tracks for the low numbers we have received i mean the, to the total number we have received in the under the, the track of environment i think maybe there is something we we need to deal with we need to do for next year's meeting uh, uh, make much more efforts to uh, to, to encourage people to think about uh, any proposals in, in this uh, uh, respect or, or the related areas. Thank you very much. 
Thanks, thanks very much for that. June. I understand what you, um, Yuta is saying is um, a relatively small amount of um, entries for this track. I suspect that a lot of people who sent tracks in had already decided what they were going to write about. Um, so I believe that environment came as a shock to lots of people. I suspect that people just thought there would be three tracks this year and had already prepared their, um, um, their proposals. Again, I'm begging, please. <laughs> That's all I can say. I, you know, I think, and, and I'll give the floor to the other speakers, but I think we should also keep in mind, well, that it's new. And uh, we know that in the IGF, there is a lot of continuity. It could also be with how we've defined it. You know, in, in environment is quite a narrow definition. In, in most government uh, and UN processes, and I think for many civil society organizations as well, um, environment is often defined as part of being sustainable development. So, but you know, the thing is, if we don't have enough sessions in this track, we're not going to be in a position to judge whether there's, there's validity in continuing it or not. Um, but let's carry on with the speaker's queue. Jennifer and then Helani and then Roberto. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is Jennifer. Hope you can see and hear me. Okay. Yes, we can. We can see and hear you. Thank you. I'm Jennifer Chung, third year MAG member from the private sector. Um, first, I wanted to congratulate the Environment Track Working Group for their good work. It is actually very useful to see the different scenarios and how statistics will fluctuate. Uh, it gives us a, a nice snapshot of, of how we can make our decisions. Um, echoing, I think, concerns um, from Yuta and also Zhao Yu, I think it's, it's, we have to be very careful when we are saying, you know, we are going to favor one, one track over the other. But I also want to say that as a new track, we should do, we should definitely support it because we as MAG did decide this was one of the, the, the four tracks. So it's 25% of what we were hoping. Uh, I'm sorry, let me take that back. Not 25%, but it, it is one of the four tracks that we're hoping to, to focus on for this year. Another uh, angle I think we can consider is rather than looking at sheer numbers of workshop proposals because people might not be so comfortable or they might be curious and a little cautious about submitting a proposal in a brand new track, we could perhaps put the spotlight on this new environment track in a different way. Uh, I'm not proposing a main session. It could be a main session. It could be another way to highlight the importance um, that we place on this track. So. So rather than just trying to look at massaging the numbers, I think we should also look holistically and see how we can give the spotlight to this new track in, in the overall agenda. Thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. Helani. Thank you, Chair. Jennifer pretty much said verbatim what I was going to say. I think uh, given that this was included after the community consultation, then we should also say that the number of proposals that we actually got across all the themes are also reflective of what the community wanted. So uh, playing around with the numbers would actually put all the other proposals at a disadvantage, but I'm fully on board with the need to encourage this session. And I actually think a main session or some other way to highlight it will you know, spark off a lot of ideas for people saying, oh God, it didn't address everything I wanted. Next year, I'm gonna come back and you know, propose all these other sessions because I really want this on. Thanks. Thanks, Elani. Roberto, and it's, Elani, by the way, it's very nice to have you speak in the MAG meeting. I've always like been- to see uh, more of you. Indeed, I've, I've had too many disturbances in the background every meeting, so I've been reduced to typing. So I'm really happy to say- That's share. fine, that's fine. Roberto. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and good morning, good afternoon, everyone again. Um, I'm Roberto Zambrana from uh, Bolivia. I'm a MAC member in the technical community. Well, um, yesterday, as you remember, I suggested uh, to Taimia's group, which actually did a great job, um, to increase, not to keep in four, but increase one uh, other proposals. Now uh, that we see her explanation, I think it's really 
valid to keep the four sub teams that they were proposing, and uh, that uh, passes over having seven uh, seven proposals, which are the best proposals they choose. So I think that's a good number, but I'm not uh, reluctant to increase this number either. But I think it's important to have the overall looking uh, to other tracks. Uh, we need to define the, the, the final number that we're going to allow in terms of uh, the different groups. And maybe after that, considering, considering the final numbers of the other groups too, then we could uh, uh, give another, another chance to increase. For now, I think seven is a good number too. Thank you. Well, so you, you're opposed to the 12 that they've selected. You're suggesting they reduce it to seven. Until, until we check the overall composition of okay. different groups. Um, Paul. Yeah, thank you, uh, Paul Rowney, uh, MAC member. I, I, I just wanted to also remind us that uh, the discussion of introducing the environment track is something that arose out of last year's IGF. It was discussed at our face-to-face. Uh, there was a discussion on whether it was a track in its own right or whether it was a cross-cutting issue that would be absorbed in the other tracks. Uh, the decision that we made was to uh, set it up as, as a track in its own right. Uh, that said, you, we, we shouldn't compromise the quality of the workshops just to push new numbers because it's a new track. You know, I, I, I think we should get the right number and you know, I'm, I'm not going to state my preference or I could do, I guess, but <laughs> not right now. Uh, but maintain the quality, see how it goes, and, and let's see how the track evolves into next year to see if we do get more workshops. It, it might fade away, it, 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 it might grow, we don't know yet. Uh, there's other forums that deal with environment uh, that might be better forums for, for this discussion. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a new track for the IGF, and let's maintain the quality and not try to push a quantity. Thank you. I, I thanks very much everyone for your input. I see there's some um, in the in the um, chat as well. You know, I, I know because Tamea um, um, checked in with me on this yesterday. I know that they've not compromised quality. So I think the 12 that they've uh, proposed today are all ones that they feel are good enough and that have, sc have scored high enough. I think we should not reduce it at this point, but I think there is a clear feeling here that if, you know, if we have to reduce, then we need to relook at this. I just want to make one additional point to what has been said. So I think the main session idea is very important, but I think we should also keep in mind um, the community. Um, you know, the IGF is a bottom-up process, so, so we're going to get session proposals from people that come to the IGF. People that are specializing in environmental and, and ICT and internet governance issues are probably not represented well enough in our community. And, and we'll never change that if we don't create an opportunity to invite them. You know, I'm thinking back of the UN Secretary General addressing um, the IGF in Paris and talking about the need for, for multidisciplinary participation as well as as multi multi sector and multi stakeholder, and and I think if we're not going to 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 create it's 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 a carrot and a stick thing in a way, or a, we need sessions at an IGF that that will attract people from the community, and there are people that are working on technology and environment, and um, um, and if we if we don't have the sessions, they're not going to come, and if we don't have the people, we're not going to have the good session proposals. So I think we need to approach this over a you know, slightly medium medium term to longer term to really um, see where this goes and and what the demand is for for this area of work in the IGF. I really like the idea of a main session. And, and I think we've heard from UNEP this week um, or last week in response to the roadmap that, that it, within the UN system, they are very concerned with technology as well so and digital cooperation. So maybe we can draw on that for, for a main session and, and invite um, Ms. Anderson, the, the head of UNEP, to come and speak at a main session. But so what I propose now is that let's move on. I think the, the mood in the room is probably divided about whether we should reduce from 12 or not at this point. Um, I think let's leave it for 12 now and, and we'll revisit um, if we have to. 
So I suggest we move on now. Tamea, you wanted to come back and speak, so you can have the last word on this. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to everybody um, for your comments. Uh, uh, yeah, we, you're basically echoing the discussion that we had <laughs> yesterday and, and the one that I, I keep having in my head on my own as well. Um, but um, just wanted to, to flag something that, that I don't want it to be missed. If we cut back down to seven, we are losing that fourth sub team that is on the screen here. So I, I just want to underline that. Um, we can be creative of how we do that. Um, and I think I speak to everybody on, um, on the environment team's um, behalf that if, if we are called upon to organize, again, intro and closing sessions or main sessions or anything else to give this um, team um, a better focus uh, or better visibility, count on us to do that. So let's talk further. Uh, and I'm happy to, to go with what the group decides. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, thanks very much to Mayor and thanks everyone. We'll look at the numbers as a whole later on in case we want to reopen this discussion. But thanks very much for your work. So a round of applause um, to you as well. And inclusion, are you ready to report? Paul, are you on standby? Yes, but, yes, yes, thank you, Chair. So yes, uh, we, we, we want the quantity. We want all of our workshops <laughs> included. Okay, so ba ba based on the discussions of uh, yesterday, uh, we looked at the number of 24. Uh, we had 18 that uh, we had already identified. Uh, we went back, reviewed. Basically, we, we looked at uh, the workshops. We first looked at all the workshops that scored over four, and four seems to be quite a common benchmark uh, across the different uh, thematic uh, groups. So we elevated all of those 20. Uh, most were already in the 18 in any case. We then looked uh, a little deeper because this started to skew the balance of the, the, the program a little bit. So we looked at uh, the next workshops, which were 21 and 22. And both of these were addressing uh, a similar theme, uh, but from different angles. Uh, they were addressing education. Uh, one was focused on e-learning and how to tackle accessibility challenges online. And the other was more around uh, educational opportunities and challenges in, in the time of a crisis such as COVID. Uh, what was interesting is uh, the workshop 107 was uh, predominantly from Gulag and Gulag was quite heavily underrepresented as a region. And the other one was more towards uh, Weok. Uh, so the general consensus was that uh, we would like them both, but uh, on condition of merger. And we, we can go a little deeper into our thoughts on uh, the characteristics of each workshop that should be merged over. Uh, we then looked uh, at workshops 23 and identified uh, workshop 25. These, this is the rankings which are workshop numbers one, two, two, and uh, 20. And again, uh, these are quite similar. Uh, they're both addressing uh, local content and language, but again, from two different uh, perspectives. Uh, one, uh, focusing more on building the data sets uh, in the African languages, and uh, the other exploring the future of endangered languages. And in, in specifically in cyberspace, but there, there was a lot of commonalities. And again, you know, we felt that both workshops needed to be there, uh, both couldn't be there. Uh, and we felt that there is, is a good uh, uh, case for a merger between uh, workshops 122 and workshops 20. Uh, we then looked at uh, bringing balance back because this skewed a little bit. So we needed to bring balance to uh, availability, affordability, and to design and policy for social inclusion. And we identified workshop, seven, uh, workshop 37 uh, that was addressing community network, electricity and digital inclusion for availability, affordability and access. And we identified workshop uh, 289 uh, to bring a balance into the design and policy for social inclusion, which was focused on women and the platform economy, uh, access, autonomy and agency. So they, they, this gave us a very strong uh, list of 24 workshops. Uh, we have identified 
a few as a backup in case some of these might want to pull out. So we actually have five workshops that we've lifted that should be looked at depending on the thematic sub theme that a workshop might uh, decide not to participate to fill that uh, gap. Uh, if we look at the stakeholder diversity that this new uh, list of workshops or the amended list of workshop brings us, uh, and if Lewis can just scroll down uh, to the workshop diversity, we, we, it, it's, it's similar in, in, in some ways, it's improved. Uh, other ways, it, it's slanted a little further away. Uh, it has increased civil society a little bit, uh, but it's still in line with the overall uh, civil society uh, uh, speakers. Uh, it did increase uh, the technical community and uh, government a little bit, so it, it, it kept, it's, it's still in balance. On the regional perspective, uh, we, we did increase uh, like a little bit, so that's good. And on gender, I, I was told that this is a better result, so we're on the right side of the line on gender. The other change that we made was actually to our sub-themes, and this, this was actually identified yesterday uh, that our workshops that were lifted into the top, including the uh, 24 as they stand now, uh, none are addressing uh, the environment. So we've actually dropped environment from the uh, sub-theme uh, number three, which is on page one. And the sub-theme now is design and policy for social inclusion. So I'm gonna end there. Uh, our document is shared and the working documents also shared. And I also wanna thank uh, the participants of the working group yesterday. It, it was a, a brilliant session. Uh, we had a very lively debate and discussion. And uh, I think we all agree that uh, this is the right number for inclusion. And these are the right workshops to be motivated to move forward. Thank you. Thanks very much, Paul, and everyone else in, in your group. Um, Sylvia, you've already asked for the floor, so please go ahead. Paul, uh, thank you very much. It's Silvia Cadena from the Technical Community for the record. Uh, Paul, um, just wanted to ask you on the governance and policy sub-theme, if you could explain what the difference is between the other sub-theme that talks about policy, just trying to figure out um, if, uh, if they are totally separate or, or, or how maybe to uh, combine those two, if it's possible, just to not, not to have just those two little sessions alone on a sub-theme. Uh, of course, if it is uh, totally different, I, I understand, but I uh, would like uh, to know more about the differences, the differences between those sub-themes. Thank you. Very good question. And to be honest, I can't think off the top of my head why we have them separate. Uh, maybe, maybe Roberto? Yes. Um... In a part, uh, Sylvia got the point. What we did was to review the, the content of the proposals and actually the weight was in the substantial theme rather than the policy aspect. And the, in other cases, as we were reviewing the other, some other proposals relating with policy, also what we evaluate was that were they were more aimed to propose a policy so that's that's the way that we in some cases assign it those two policy and some others to the substantial sub theme um, that's why we we don't have in in general terms among the four among the 70 proposal we just have i think only only five uh, proposals related with this sixth sub theme of policy in fact, I was going to ask the same question, and I was going to suggest that you actually move those two workshops into the other groups, maybe into design and policy for inclusion. And the reason is really because the IGF, everything is supposed to be about governance and policy. And some, some, I, I, this MAG hasn't really struggled with this, I think, but I know that in the past, MAGs have, have had to reject workshop proposals that do not deal with governance and policy that are about project implementation, for example. So I do think you, you might want to rethink having 
um, a sub theme for governance and policy, when you also have a sub theme for um, design and policy for, for social inclusion. I don't know, but I mean, aside from that, I think you can think about that. I don't know if anyone else has comments on that, but um, thanks very much for your, your excellent work. Um, does anyone else have questions for you? I don't see any hands. And Henrietta, I just wanted to, to just respond. I, we, we will definitely take that back to the group. Uh, there, there was a rationale for separating it, but uh, I, I think we will revisit that and, and yeah, and make, make the right decision. I think just think about it because in a way, I think all your other sub themes are also uh, addressing governance and policy in, in, you know, in one way or another. So just think about that. But thanks very much. And you've come up with a number of 24. And um, so I've been adding up totals. We're now up to 53 accepted workshop proposals. And if we're ready to say thank you and applaud this group, let's, let's move on. So, so well done and thanks for your hard work. And it seems it's gone relatively smoothly as well. So thanks very much, Paul, and um, everyone else in this group. Thank you. Um, trust, are you ready? Yes, good morning um, and afternoon and evening. Um, I, yes, Sylvia might have something to add at the end, but I can uh, summarize where we got to and what I shared on the mag list yesterday. And uh, I should say that I'm Ben Wallace with Microsoft, for the record. Um, and I'm sure the presentation is coming up on the screen, but I, I can already start. So in our breakout yesterday, the trust evaluation group made some slight revisions um, to the recommendations that we sent previously. So we stayed with the, um, with the proportion. Um, so we, we kind of reduced from 36 to 33, um, the number that we were proposing be taken forward, um, which is 41% of the 80 slots that were envisaged. Um, the workshops are ranked so that the Secretariat knows exactly which ones to approve once it's been decided how many slots there are um, overall and what proportion are allotted to each track. And then that also allows the Secretariat to know which workshop to turn to next if one of the approved workshops um, decides it, it can't go ahead in a remote IGF setting. In deciding um, how to rank these 36, um, we largely stayed with um, ranking by the score that they'd received, um, that focus on quality. Um, but we did decide that we should retain those from the yellow basket because they'd all been lifted up to help improve balance in our track in various ways. So um, we took a simple approach of moving the bottom five of our green basket um, down to the bottom of our list um, of 36. I say 36 because we've kept a reserve list um, alongside the 33 we, we propose to be taken forward. And moving those, um, those five down to the bottom didn't have a negative impact on the balance between the sub themes as those um, bottom five, those that were ranked 26 to 30th, in our top 30 green basket. Um, they're spread across all of the sub-themes sub um, except the smallest one. We, the, the major change, I guess, or one other change to mention is that we decided to make one of our workshop proposals um, a conditional ap approval. And workshop 81 is about um, US-China relations. It includes speaker slots for both US and Chinese government representatives. And the proposers had listed um, a US State Department official um, as a tentative speaker. But um, Susan had checked in with the State Department. They didn't recall receiving the request. And given the topic, um, potentially a contentious discussion, we were concerned that the session shouldn't go ahead with a representative of one government, but not the other. So 
we recommend a workshop be approved, um, but only once the organizers can confirm to the Secretariat that they have confirmed speakers from both the US and Chinese governments. Um, and finally, uh, yesterday for the sub theme structure, um, we had a table um, listing all of the workshops in a table format. And during the discussion we were talked, um, it was discussed whether we could show that with a flow, um, a logical flow between the different sub themes. Um, so we've done that. Um, I think if you scroll down the, uh, the document until it goes from a portrait to uh, a landscape mode, it'll, it'll, um, and that's another change we made. It doesn't, um, it's not a reallocation of workshops, keep scrolling, um, but it's just kind of additional thinking about how the structure the sub thematic structure would work. Almost there, it's the next page down. Um, and while we, that um, looms into view, too wide for the screen, unfortunately, um, let me just um, pass to Sylvia to see if she has anything to add. Sylvia, um, luckily for me, is uh, very adept at using spreadsheets. So she was able to keep on top of the stats. We, we made a good team in that respect. Um, Sylvia, is there anything you'd like to add? Thanks, Ben. No, not really. Um, uh, the, the stats didn't change that much from the previous report uh, that we provided, and you explained that, and everybody has the report on the mailbox uh, to explore. Um, the only bit that, um, that we might uh, take a look is when those profiles are updated to review uh, when the speakers update their profiles, just to review how the stats uh, play out based on the information that we shared yesterday about um, universities being listed as civil society and not as technical community. So I think that will probably have a big impact on on the um, on how the, the the charts actually look like. And um, and uh, yeah, that was it. Uh, Henriette made a question about. Um, if it was a requirement to ask people if they are willing to speak before submitting a proposal. And um, yes, but then there are folks that didn't have their profile already loaded on the IGF website. So there are there, there is another field where um, people added other speakers that were contacted according to them, uh, the organizers. Uh, we of course don't have any way to verify that, uh, but for whatever reason they didn't uh, have all of that um, confirmed. But yeah, that, that's, that's all for me. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Sylvia. And thanks everyone else in the group. Any questions or comments for the group? I don't see anyone asking for the floor. By the way, I really like your new sub themes. Asking for floor. Go ahead, Mary. Just okay. introduce yourself. My name is Mary, um, MAG member on my third year uh, representing the uh, technical community, but I'm from Nigeria. Um, I don't have technical questions for them, but uh, I wanted to ask whether there are, whether you, you, you had um, workshop organizers uh, uh, that um, had gaps in the, in um, speaker gaps and whether those were identified and uh, whether um, um, or, or, or the potential speakers could be contacted uh, to, to, or pointed to them to, to, to be able to contact them to be speakers. Just a question. Um, I, don't, so I don't know if I perfectly understand the question. Thank you, Mary. Um, sorry, we... if you didn't understand the question, please let me say it again. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm saying why you were evaluating, um, yeah. because I saw in my in the inclusion, you know, some of the proposers will say that they are yet to contact some uh, some other some speakers that uh, they, they, they have not. They, they, they are yet. To, they they had gaps. Whether in your own case you noticed that they were some of the proposal 
that they will speak uh, their gaps in their in, in panelists or speaker um, slots. And uh, if if it's yes, and they say they will still contact them, is it possible to point out or refer them to some or propose to them some speakers that would fit in into their proposals? Just a question. I don't know whether it's clear. Yes, that's clear now, sorry. I, because we talk about speaker gaps partly in terms of what types of stakeholder or region are underrepresented, that's a gap. Um, so that, that's why I, I got confused, not, not the way you asked the question. I don't think we went into that level of detail in our group um, with, the, with those that, that didn't score as highly that scored under four that were yellow basket proposals that were to be lifted up. We did include recommendations of how they might improve their workshop and that um, included types of speakers they should aim to invite to help improve diversity, but it didn't go into the detail of suggesting individuals that they could invite to fill gaps. So I guess- Yeah, the, the, the other thing that I could add to your question, Mary, is that on the comments from the, the, the group, the email that will be sent um, to the workshop organizers, there are comments there uh, from different MAC members about um, gaps to, to fulfill. But uh, we took the diversity definition the way that we def define it in terms of if they were addressing the three um, dimensions of diversity, we didn't uh, consider the other things as, as big gaps because uh, that's how the definition was uh, drafted and established by the MAC. So there are some recommendations, especially for the ones that were originally marked as yellow, that has, has been mentioned. Um, but uh, because we had the largest number of proposals, we didn't went through that level of detail. But um, I, I guess when they start confirming, uh, we can also start looking at uh, ways of helping them to improve any aspects of their proposals for their online delivery. Thank you very and, much. Um, can I, this is Ben, I just want to say one more very small thing, Ben from Microsoft. The, the image you can see on the screen um, with the flow of the sub themes, um, I, I would be very happy to uh, provide a slide that has more attractively placed arrows um, there was a little bit of an issue once I pasted a, a PowerPoint slide into the Word document and uh, I know it doesn't look very pretty. So that doesn't need to be the final um, version, but um, thank you. Any other questions for this group? No. So I, I think we have to congratulate you. Um, thanks very much to the old rockers as they describe themselves, Sylvia and Ben. Um, with no offense to MAG members that are younger uh, or older. <laughs> um, and to everyone in your group, you had a lot of proposals and you were a big group. And um, thanks very much for all your hard work. So I think we can congratulate you and applaud you. And now I don't see anyone asking for the floor. The Secretariat has prepared a slide for us just with the numbers so we can see what the numbers are. Um, Secretariat, can you bring that up for us, please? And we have just enough time to finish our session on time. So that is what we have at the moment. We have uh, um, 86. We have a distribution of number of workshops per track that is uh, proportional with the exception of environment where we have a maintained quality control, but we have allocated a slightly larger number to environment at this point because it's a new theme and you know, all of the factors that we have taken into account. So I think the real question at this point is, 
do we go with 86 and, um, and trust that um, we might lose some when we ask people to re-submit um, or submit with their, their design proposals for a virtual IGF? Um, or do we want to reduce the numbers? So that's really the question on the table at the moment. Does anybody have any, uh, Shengatai, I mean, Secretariat, I'd like you to, to speak. I see Jennifer's asked for the floor, but I think it's good to get Secretariat's perspective on this as well. So Shengatai, did, you know, can you just comment and give advice at this point? Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Um, as I said, I mean, it, 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 it is the uh, mandate of the MAG to come up with the um, schedule and program um, as far as the sessions are concerned. So uh, it's all fine, just as long as um, the, the costs for holding it aren't that exorbitant. And since it's online, it's not going to be that exorbitant. Um, the participants um, are happy with it that we don't get, you know, any Zoom fever. I think there was a quote from yesterday, and uh, we lose a lot of participants halfway through the, the, the program because it's too heavy. And um, <clears throat> the attendance statistics that we have from this meeting will also be good um, because that is what we are measured upon. And as you know, there's a few competing um, initiatives out there, so we should still maintain um, those strong statistics. But uh, we, we, we're just here to do what um, to hear the advice of the MAG, and we'll give that advice to the Secretary General's office and see what he says. But he normally follows the advice of the MAG. Mm. Um, thanks for that, Shengatai. So, um, Jennifer, Yuta, Paul, and Roberto, um, please take the floor, but can you all try to be brief so that we can finish our plenary session on time on the half hour? Jennifer. Thank you, Chair. I will be very brief, actually, just to, in direct response to your question to, to us. I think that, you know, we can't uh, go for a number in the hopes that some people would drop out. We definitely need to go for a number. And if people drop out, then they drop out. And then we, we adjust, you know, our, our, our schedule in that manner. I don't want to delve too much into the uh, discussion that I think we're probably going to have regarding the virtual uh, uh, format of the IGF. But just to say that, uh, you know, just to highlight that we do have the luxury of time if we are creative. So I think that's, that's all I wanted to add. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Jennifer. Yuta. Yes, thank you for giving me the floor. Yuta Kroll, MAC member in my third year for civil society. I'm from Germany. Um, I do think that first and foremost, we need to look for quality of the proposals. I do think all the groups have now done a very good job in ensuring that the best scoring proposals ended up in this list of 86. Also, we cautioned at some points, uh, like we did in the trust group with that proposal uh, uh, with uh, Chinese and UK, uh, US government representatives. It would only be really good if they are both showing up there. So uh, with regard to the second round of wetting that we need uh, when, when we get back to workshop proposals, asking them whether they will be willing to run a, a virtual session at the IGF. I do think the MAC should dedicate some time how we will deal with that. Obviously, if you get back that your proposal is accepted for the global IGF, you will be very happy and say, okay, I will cope with the situation that it's a virtual session. Uh, and then afterwards, difficulties uh, may just uh, occur to you. So I do think we should take some time with the MAC to develop some guidelines for workshop proposals, how to best deal with that situation, that it will be a digital or virtual session at the IGF, uh, so that they can take a proper decision whether they are really up to run that session. Uh, and then not just let's hope that some will drop out, but let's hope that most of them will find a good way to, to stay in yeah. the program and have a good quality session. 
that's my two cents. Thank you. Absolutely, Yuta, because our, our job remains to ensure that it's a good event with quality sessions. Paul, go ahead. Yeah, Paul, Paul Rowney. I, I just wanted to add to, to what's already been discussed as well. I, I, I don't think we can say a number right now. Um, there, there's still other variables that uh, we, we haven't concluded on. Uh, you know, it, it really comes down to retaining uh, people, keeping their interest. Uh, that comes down to how many days we run the uh, IGF over, how many tracks we're running, you know, how many of these workshops are running virtually in parallel, uh, how many hours, you know, we're going to spread this over a day. You know, there, there is a risk if we have too much. You know, we've, also, we've got in addition to this, we've got the main sessions, we've got the dynamic coalitions, we've got the open forums, we've got day zero, we've got other sessions that are also running. Uh, so it, it's a packed program. Uh, you know, is 86 the right number? I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think we can make that call. But once you add everything together, you know, it's a lot. And we might end up losing people, confusing people, uh, diluting participation. Uh, it might take us in the wrong direction. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. And do you have a proposal, though? Or are you just expressing some concern? at this point. It's, well, it's, are you saying you'd like us as the Secretariat to prepare what this would look like? You know, how many of these sessions are 90 minutes? How many of no, them are 60 minutes? That, that, that's not what I'm saying. I, we, 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 we need to get a better understanding. You know, how, how many main sessions are we having? How many DCs, open okay. forums, how many other sessions? How are they running in parallel? How many days are we planning to run this over? They're all material, I think. Yeah. To, to concluding on this number of workshops because it has to fit into the overall and right now we're just looking at one portion yeah. of the overall yeah. IGF without looking at the rest. Um, sorry, I'll, I'll continue with the speaker um, uh, line. I just want to respond to Paul. I think that's very wise, Paul, and maybe we can consider um, giving these provisional approval uh, and, and not only based on a second round of vetting, but also based on the design. Or we want to wait before we communicate the final decision of the MAG to the workshop propose, proposers until we are a little bit further along with, with, with the design of the overall event. So I think that's very useful input, Paul. Roberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Roberto Zambrana from Bolivia, uh, MAG member. Um, I, ag I agree with most of the things that have been said, but uh, I would like to make a suggestion about uh, the communications with the proposers. I think it would be good to um, explicitly say that uh, we accepted their proposals, but maybe maybe we can do it like that, not, that the, not, the, not to the whole 86 proposers but to the ones that we already selected in the first round of the presentations we made. Uh, we are going to, to I think we're, we're going to have a number around 60 of, of the first round we made. And we know that those are very good quality proposals. And I think it could be good to tell them that they were accepted. And of course, that in this case, we're going to have an, a virtual IGF. So they made all the preparations and, and to receive their final acceptance going in this new, in this new virtual way. Uh, the others, the remaining, let, let's say the remaining uh, 26 that we already know that we went to go to, to deep uh, a little bit more about the quality, the things that uh, maybe in some cases could be improved uh, perhaps we could tell them that uh, initially we consider good proposals and that we will need uh, maybe in, in, in maybe we can, we can even suggest the things that we already look at as 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 uh, not problems but things that they could improve and tell them and uh, and also of course to tell them that we're going to have a virtual a virtual IGF and uh, to adjust to this. And finally, uh, there are some other mergers also. And of course, in those cases, we need to tell them that, that they have to consider if they agree with the mergers. And uh, that, that could be good if we have that kind of communication. And after that, we will receive all the confirmations and maybe we could uh, look to, to the numbers again, uh, seeing how, 
how are we going to allocate them in the overall program? Thank you. Um, thanks, thanks, Roberto. Um, I have a question for clarification, but I'll, I'll, I'll raise it later. Um, Tamea, you are next. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to add to the points that were mentioned before, I, I really agree um, with Paul and Roberto and others who have spoken before um, that we need to um, see the entire program to be able to make a decision on the numbers. I think that is very important um, that we, we know also how many um, DC, NRI, open forum, uh, special session, pre-event, main session, or anything else that we have in the program. Um, there might be, uh, you know, creative ways to work with this. Um, NRIs uh, might want to work in different time zones than, uh, than the main part of the program. There's, there's that issue there. Um, People might want to still have pre-events or after events that are that are not part of the actual program. That that might also happen. Um, but what we need to be able to provide to the people that we identify um, that what we want them on the sessions with their proposals and their workshop is really what kind of support are we prepared to give them? Because if I think if we give go to them with a question, do you still want to have your session? I think it's a pretty quick and rash answer that people will say, well, of course I want to have my sessional program. That's why I proposed it. Um, but people will want to know why, you know, what, what is it that is needed there? How is an online session run? Who will be the technical facilitator? What platform will be used for it? Um, how is their interpretation or not? How can people engage? It's a lot more than uh, that is at the at the background and how much of that can we really provide because Luis is a magician but it's, uh, there's only one of them so we, we also need to know how much is there for us um, uh, to, to provide and that can also help us make a decision on is it 86 or is it you know four <laughs> um, so we really need to think about that um, and there's also a point that I think Hannah raised in the chat that, that that is very relevant I think if we want some consistency in the program we might want to also discuss the length of the sessions and that, that also needs to be communicated um, consistently to the, to the organizers. Um, are we allowing anybody to go with 90 minutes, 60 minutes? They are choosing, are we choosing? Um, we, we need to be able to think about all these things together uh, before we make a decision. So this is a really good provisional list and I, and I applaud all my colleagues for the great work done um, in selecting the workshops. But I think we really need to consider everything together. And before that, I would caution us not to reach out to the organizers just yet. Thanks, Tamea. Um, all very useful input. Paul Charlton. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, Paul, we can hear you. Okay, good. Um, I, I've been listening carefully to, to the discussion. My, my own, I guess, personal preference is to err on the side of having a, maybe a slightly smaller, more concise uh, program. Um, I agree with what a lot of Tame and others have said about we need to, to proceed carefully and not rush to make judgments about a particular number. Uh, I was particularly struck by what Jennifer said at the beginning of the conversation when she said that whatever number we pick, it has to be a number we're comfortable with and we, we cannot uh, and should not assume that we'll end up with a lower number because some people will, will drop off because they won't be able to do uh, their sessions virtually. Uh, that, may be, that may well be the case, but I, I do think we have to be comfortable with the number up front. Uh, so, uh, so I just wanted to, to, uh, to weigh in on that. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Um, Nebosha. I actually put my hand down, so because oh, you people already hand? said something. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Secretariat, is there anything in the chat that that we need to that's that's important or is it all related to what we've said mm -hmm. already? Oh Shengatai has just shared the numbers. Um by the way, these have not been vetted yet, but yes, there were 31 open forum applications, 
45 day zero, um, 72 IGF village booths, 16 dynamic coalitions, and seven NRI um, meeting requests. So um, there's there's quite a lot, and I think we need to we, we need to put all of that. Um, into our basket and, and discuss what to do with it. So my takeaway from this is, I have one question though, before I'll try and summarize the key points that came out of this. And, and Roberto, this was in response to you. You were talking about uh, sessions that we wanted to give them suggestions for improvement. You know, my assumption actually is that, with, you know, unless there really is an exception, like the exception we heard of from the trust um, track, um, is that you've approved proposals that you don't think need improvement. I think if you have proposals in your slate that need improvement, I think you might want to rethink whether you're including them or not. Because my assumption is that you really have taken um, only those that you feel are really, really very good. So I'm just, I just want to check in on that. You know, if there are workshop proposals and that you feel need improvement, I would advise the, the, the groups to, to perhaps reconsider. I guess what you have done is to try and have sub-theme balance. So, you know, we don't have to dwell on that now, but I do think at this point, we really want to ensure quality as being the, the, the really the primary measure. And Maria Paz and Sylvia, if you can go quickly. And then I'll just try and summarize the key points that came out of this. Maria Paz, do you want to speak? Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. This is Maria Paz Canales, a civil society representative from RULAC. Um, my, my comment is only um, to make a suggestion in terms of how to confirm that still interest uh, for some of these activities. And I, I, I would like to use the example of uh, what is going on with the organization of RightsCon that it was also mentioned in the uh, email thread about this uh, virtual organization of the AGF. I think that we shouldn't assume that for all the other activities like the zero day events or the boots, the, uh, everyone will keep the interest that they originally manifest considering uh, a physical uh, in-person IGF. So I, I think that the same that uh, they did it in RightsCon, a uh, first a stage to more fairly assess uh, the a scenario. It will be to send a message uh, to those and, and ask them to confirm if they are still interested in, in, in the scenario of a virtual setting of the IGF. So that then we can work with a number that is updated to, to the current situation and, and, and take it from there. Um, and I will reiterate something that it was said uh, in, the, in the thread in terms of the uh, needs of like finding a, a bond back structure for the time uh, allocation and also follow the example of RightsCon in terms of that for the flexible time schedule uh, to ask uh, the, the organizers of the group to self-identify what will be the time zones that would better suit them and provide them the responsibility to organize where their uh, mm -hmm. session participants with their speakers and everything. That worked very smoothly because in that way you distribute the responsibility of identifying the mm -hmm. times and, and reduce the, the workload of the secretariat that will be very heavy in these issues. So I will leave it there. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Maria Paz. Sylvia. Hi, uh, thanks. It's Silvia Caena, a MAG member, technical community on my third year. Um, well, th first of all, thank you very much, Chengetai, for putting the numbers on the chat. That that's a, is, is very useful. I think it is very important to, as my colleagues have expressed, uh, to reconfirm uh, interest. I have always been um, very taken, let's say, by the the fact that, that in reality, all of the efforts from the MAC to select workshop proposals normally don't even account for even half of the program of the event. Um, so I, I'm, I'm always uh, pushing for having open forums uh, reduced uh, considerably. Uh, th those efforts have not been very successful <laughs> over the years. But maybe um, uh, this year is an opportunity to, to take that um, a little bit more seriously. Uh, if you look at a little file that I shared earlier 
today I was playing a little bit with time zones and trying to figure out how it will look like um, if it was not having a lot of Zoom fatigue and not having full nine hours days and things like that and taking it slowly using 90 minutes and 120 minutes for main sessions and not even counting everything that was there. I got to like 11 days of activities. So over 24 hours and spread around um, five different time zones. So it is humongous if we are thinking about all of these numbers of sessions. So confirm, confirming interest is, is very important. The early we can do that, the better, even if the language on the message saying that is, you know, tempting the waters, let's say, to try to figure out um, what they are, right? Um, the part that doesn't really worry me uh, is, is the boots, um, independently of how it is uh, managed in the end. Last year they did um, quite, um, they did quite a lot of um, effort, the, the Secretariat, to ask the boots not to, um, and the, the German host to not print materials. So there was uh, like a little page on the shared app where they could load all their materials and things like that. So it could be, you know, simple things like that or, or videos. And so they can have the little page uh, where they put all that information in and that kind of like box ticked in terms of, of having boots and things like that. Uh, but I think the NRI's uh, uh, collaboration sessions uh, is important that they check really, really what they need. Um, and the same for everything else because uh, if you look at those, um, it's, it's really a lot of sessions when you add one thing after the other, um, is a lot of time to try to accommodate uh, what lots of people said about not having a full day, um, having breaks in between, um, uh, having main sessions for all of the, the, the thematic tracks and then a few others that were mentioned. So I, I made some rough calculations um, but it's is, um, is pretty full on. <laughs> so when you look at that, uh, it's, it's pretty full on. So yeah, just uh, you, we have a lot to consider and it's always, we, like in the last couple of years, we have given the selection process to the secretariat, you know, kind of like our work is done sort of. And then they manage the communication with the organizers. They put together those spreadsheets to try to figure out where all the but how the puzzle fits. Um, this this is is uh, is a puzzle that it is going to take a lot of mind to solve. Um, and and I think is we, we need to when when we say get creative is 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 not that easy. But anyway, uh, just just a, a, a combo. You know, Thanks, thinking Susan. while I'm talking. <laughs> I'm going to come back to that. You know, we're not dealing with those things yet but it's good to begin preparing for, for dealing with those other formats. Liana, you'll be the last person to speak in this segment. We're canceling the break because we're running late um, and then we'll be back on track. Liana. Thank you very much, Henriette. Liana Galston speaking, uh, Civil Society, third year, uh, to Mac, Armenia. Um, I'd like to have some clarity on the, we've been speaking about the second vetting, etc. So I'd like really um, to know how that uh, would look like for us as a MAG members. Would we go through all the workshops again or uh, we're giving the uh, proposers a second chance uh, of changing uh, for their proposals and coming up with new things, how they are uh, managing the, the online, the virtual meeting and also uh, I would support the, uh, the idea of uh, preparing some guidelines for these proposers uh, because those ones, they, they didn't know actually how to, to, to deal with the virtual one. I mean, they had a section of uh, interaction um, for the online participant, but since everyone now will be on uh, this online platform, they would uh, consider it carefully about the remote moderators. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to know um, for us as members, how would be the, the process? Yeah. Uh, how long will be, I mean, we're gathering the information in, uh, in a chat and a track that you started and read in our mailing list. But it would be good for us also to know when will be the decision made. I guess that it's not at this meeting on this couple of days, but um, 
anyway, some clarity with that uh, on our further work with will will be appreciated. Thank you. Also, program duration also like uh, when we will come up with this uh, decision uh, for how long will be the duration of the overall meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks very much, Liana. Everyone. So this is um, um, we have a we've we've have a big achievement, we have agreed on workshops, but there are quite a few buts for us to consider. So I think the first point is that many of you are pointing out that we need to look at the overall design and that it's very difficult to, there's a feeling that 86 is too many, um, or that it's a lot. And then I think quite correctly, um, we shouldn't settle on a number if we aren't prepared to deal with that number. So what I sense here is that we need to do a little bit more work on the overall design of the event, and then we'll be in a better position to judge um, on, on whether we can actually accommodate 86 or not. So that's one thing. We need to look at the other formats, the day zero events, the open forums, etc. I think Maria Paz's point is very, very important. You know, most people who organize day zeros do that because they are taking advantage of the fact that people are together physically for a global IGF. So they might very well not want to do that if they can't, if they can't benefit from that. So I think that um, this is, is it's really good for us, um, Secretariat, for you to, to look at this. And we might want to just ask everyone who submitted a proposal so far for the non-workshop sessions if they still want to go ahead. So we need to look at that. I suspect there'll be quite a dramatic change. And um, then we need to look at how much support and what support we can give to these sessions. And, and I think, Timea, my takeaway from what you are saying is that we need to be clear on that before we enter into the second vetting process. We need to first establish, um, number one, more or less, what is the design of our event? over how many days, you know, what time zones, and we need to have some certainty on, on what our capacity is to support those sessions. And that raises other questions such as, do we outsource support? Or do we, do we, do MAG members volunteer to support sessions? So there, there are all kinds of questions there we need to look at relate to the overall design and administration of the virtual IGF. And then I think the vetting, we need to start talking about what's involved in this vetting. I think, Liana, your point is very important. And what I'd like to suggest, um, we, we don't wanna just give it back to the workshop uh, process, working group, they've worked so much already, unless they are raising their hands and volunteering. But what I suggest is that we do some brainstorming on the list. Um, we can create a subject thread for that, for the second vetting process. And then if there's some MAG volunteers, um, would like to work on, on what that would uh, involve. I think that would be very useful, particularly people that have had some experience recently in organizing virtual events. And then I think finally, and also taking this from Liana's uh, last intervention, we need to revise our timeline. So our timeline needs to shift a little bit now, in fact, maybe more than a little bit. And I think that after this meeting um, and before we have our next MAG call, um, we can work with the Secretariat to, to revise what that timeline um, is like. So in fact, I'm proposing at this point, and I, you know, Secretariat, let me know if you think this is okay, that we delay communicating our decisions um, to the workshop proposers until we've had our next call. Because by the time we have our next call, we'll probably have a better sense of, of the timeline and of the overall um, parameters of what the virtual IGF will, will be like. So I don't see any, any speaking um, requests. Um, hello, just... hello, hello, yes, Anya. Uh, yeah, okay. I, did, I did put, um, I did click the, the, the speaking queue. I don't know why my own is not showing. Sorry that I'm intervening. Um, uh, first, uh, I want to say that uh, the number 86 uh, looks um, large for me. Um, I, I don't know how we're going to cover that. And again, as we said, when we were doing the presentation, if we do a, a statistics on uh, percentages of um, 
um, uh, proposal we had as against the number that we are approving, I think there will be some of the of the tracks that we need to adjust for. And uh, 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 yesterday we were talking about 80. So why do we have to go to 86? So uh, that's one. And um, uh, the other thing is that if we put it side by side with other, other like others have said, then it will give us a better view, I, uh, better eye view of what we are grappling with. What I mean by that, if we put, uh, if we say a, a workshop, it is the other or the or the other um, activities, open forum, and this one. So put them side by side and see whether there are, you know, we now will be able to take a decision. So for me, 86 is large. We should uh, look at it and see what we can do and get back to. The 80 was a bit better for me because I don't know whether we have all the resources in terms of technical they, to be able to, to, to run 86 workshop and how many of them can we run parallel. Uh, in the, the support that we need, technical support that the secretariat will need to be able to do all that. So uh, that, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I don't go with the 86 number, it, it is large. Um, thanks, thanks for that, uh, Mary. But we can't change that number now because if we change that number now, it means that the groups need to go back. So I think let's let's stay with this number now, but with the awareness that there's concern about the number. Let's look at the design of the event. Let's look at the vetting process, and then we'll look at that. I think if any of the groups feel that there's a workshop that they've put through that doesn't deserve to be put through, then it shouldn't be there. But I trust actually that you've already done that. You've, you've, you've applied the quality criteria. So I think that if these are 86 good sessions, um, that's, that's, that's a number that we have on the table now that's been approved. I think let's not worry too much about that now. We'll, we'll be able to assess that number better um, when, we, when we have um, um, a better idea of what the design of, of the virtual IGF will be like. If you think that, you know, we also can look at it from the, from the 65 that we had last year, but also I think as, as um, Sylvia and Maria Paz have pointed out, we might have fewer other sessions. So let's not panic about this now, but let's pause before we give proposers final confirmation. We also need to think about the vetting process. Um, I just want to, I haven't been able to follow everything in the chat, but I saw one comment in the chat that I think it's worth noting at this point. And that is that we will probably have to have another MAG meeting, um, maybe not a three-day meeting like this, but something that's more than just a call. I think, Jennifer, that was your point. And I think that is, uh, it's important to note that. But let's not feel too panicky either. I think, you know, IGFs have had um, large numbers of workshops before, and often the constraints have been um, physical constraints. And, you know, once we, we look at what our IGF looks like, we might feel a little bit differently about this, or we might feel that we have to cut the numbers, and then we'll come up with a way of doing that. I think um, work for us to start um, in the next week is the second vetting process and the revised timeline and to begin to look at what support we can provide and what support we need for a virtual IGF. But we can't deal with all of that today. So I think on that, I'd like to close this plenary. I, I, I don't want to close it with, pe with people feeling anxious uh, about the 86. I think feel, feel positive about the fact that there are 86 good sessions that have been approved. Um, if the number turns out to be too big, and it might, we'll find a creative uh, and constructive way of dealing with that. So um, we don't have time for a break, but thanks very much, everyone. This is a huge, um, a huge <coughs> chunk of work um, that you have just completed. Right. So feel good about it, celebrate. Um, hi, Andrea, sorry. I, can I come in? Yes, go ahead. Um, sorry, I've been trying to um, get to the queue, but because of internet issues, I'm, it's just flipping, so it's not loading. Thank you um, for giving me the floor, Chair. I just wanted to give my opinion um, regarding the whole um, matter of the 86 um, workshops. 
Um, I believe the 86 workshop is okay for me and um, that uh, we can or should be able to accommodate that. Um, but we have to really clarify on few things that is um, regarding stretching the workshop, um, the meeting days. We haven't really talked about or we haven't really um, considered um, coming to a conclusion if we are doing more than four days as the physical meeting or we're stretching it to two weeks or more than that. I think um, if you have a conclusion and that, that will also be very um it will be very essential in this case to really know how to accommodate all of this or if we have more uh, workshops that we want to um, accommodate. And the other point is also to try to um, reach out to the organizers and organizers to make sure all of them are able to adapt to the virtual meeting as their prior, um, uh, the prior initiative was to do it um, physically. So it's important to know so that um, at the end of the day, we would know if some might be able to adapt to it or if they might, there might be dropout. But in all the case, there should be a backup that is like to have a, I think I've seen Jennifer mentioned that in the chat that there should, yeah. there can be a waiting list if there are dropout of construction organizers that cannot, that feel they cannot you know, adapt to the virtual meeting. So um, these are a few of the points that I wanted us to really look and put into consideration. But for me, the 86 um, workshop is quite okay. And then we should be able to accommodate that. Thank you. Thanks, Adama. It's good. I'm glad, I'm glad that, you know, that, that some people feel comfortable with the number. And I recognize that some people don't. I think that, I mean, my sense is that there's some anxiety. So what I want to do now just to, to help us cope with that is to ask for volunteers, you know, if they, if they, I know you've all worked hard and I know the work, um, workshop, evaluate, workshop process working group has worked incredibly hard, but can I ask people that want to work on this vetting process about how are we going to communicate to proposers that we want them to tell us how they're going to run the the, the session virtually and also beginning to try and, and establish what type of support we need to provide to them. Can I ask people that are willing to work on this to just put their names um, uh, in the chat and then Secretariat can note that down and then maybe that will give us a little bit of a reassurance that, that, we, that, we, that there, there will be some amongst us who will begin to apply their minds and time and energy to what is clearly a concern for us. So um, people that would like to, that are willing to volunteer to work on second round vetting and establishing you know, what support we need to give workshops. This is about workshops, not about virtual IGF as a whole. This is specifically about workshops. Please put your names in the chat. Great. Okay, you can carry on doing that and I am now going to close the session on workshops and um, congratulate the MAG IGF 2020 for your work. So well done everyone and it's, it's actually been very impressive. So we can't have a break. <laughs> We've gone on too late. I'm really sorry. So now we are going to discuss main sessions. Um, I know we're not going to be able to take the issue of the virtual IGF um, away um, from our thinking, and that's good. You know, we can consider that. Um, so we now we are going to continue until um, half past um, three, fifteen thirty UTC. So we do need to be efficient in our time. The purpose of this session is to to look at which main session ideas are already on the table, to come up with new ones, um, to look at what we can and can't do, um, and also to begin to look at how we want to approach the introductory and concluding sessions. And um, we're going to have some discussion in plenary, Secretariat will put a slide up for us, but then you're going to break out and you'll be able to have this discussion in new breakout groups, and in time zones that are that are hopefully not too tough for you. So, but let's just look at where we are now, what we are starting with. Um, so Secretariat, if you can just put that slide that you've prepared up for us, please. 
um, this is just, this slide summarizes what's come out of the open consultation discussion and what has emerged from the MAG um, thus far this year, um, previous discussions, as well as um, the suggestions from the, from the trust, sorry, the data track for one of their workshops to be converted to a main session. So let's just hang on a sec. Louise, are you looking for it? Hey, Harriet, yes. Um, let's see here. Update on the state of preparations. It's the slide that no. Shane and I prepared. Yes, 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 it's over here. Have you got it? It's, uh, we prepared it this morning. Yes, and it was uploaded, so it's strange. Uh, give me one moment, please. I'm going to put it. I'm sure everyone needs to. If people need to take a short little bathroom break, Did you manage to find it, Louise? I'm working on that. Okay. I think I've got it here. If here it is, here it is. Okay. Okay, good, good. Otherwise I can share my screen. Okay. It's here, I'm going to open it now. Okay, great. Okay. It's with this one. That's it, that's it. Thanks very much, Louise. So everyone, what you're seeing in front of you now are just, these are the main session ideas we've started with. In fact, a new one emerged uh, today, which is the one on environment. So um, the one is the, the main session proposal that Roberto and Karim and others have been working on since January. And the latest um, definition of that is to, to call it um, committed actions or definitive or committed actions for connecting and enabling the remaining billions. Then um, from the open consultation, uh, there was this, I think, fairly strong input that we need some kind of main session for dealing with the digital roadmap, um, digital cooperation roadmap, and that ongoing discussion about IGF plus and IGF as a platform for digital cooperation. Then there was a proposal to look at emerging issues um, and that came from ISOC, um, particularly in the light of the sort of internet way of networking, um, different ways of approaching um, new and emerging issues. And then there's the NRI session, which they had a lot of consultation to come up with their proposal for a 2020 main session, which was to look at the role of the internet in emergency situations. And, and then we've heard from the data workshop evaluation group that they had a workshop proposal, which was a very big picture look at how things have shifted uh, around data governance. Um, and they felt that would work better as a main session. And then um, just to flag here, um, I think if you're not aware, um, just to remind you, I know why Min is probably with us, he might want to add, um, um, something on this, but I think we, we can assume that the specific pandemic issues will also be dealt with um, in the high level sessions, which would have been organized by the host country, but which will now be organized um, in partnership with UN agencies. So um, um, just look at the next slide for me, please. Um, thanks, thanks, Louise. And um, the, the second slide. Okay, so the second slide disappeared of this one. That doesn't matter. I think the, sec the second slide had just other considerations that, that, that you needed to think about um, in terms of the, 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 the main sessions. And that I think if I remember correctly, that was introductory and concluding sessions. You did that last year. 
and, and I think the feedback was very positive, that having these thematic introductory and concluding sessions worked very well. And then the other thing I just would like you to consider in this plenary discussion, but also in your breakout groups, is the impact of, of having a virtual IGF on main session scheduling and design. You know, just for example, uh, you know, we want to make sure that main sessions don't clash we, or, or that they are not in time zones that are completely inaccessible to large numbers of people. So, so you don't have to go into that in too much detail now because we still have to look at design, but just to put that on the table. So on that, I'm opening the floor for general discussion and input. And Luis, you can go back to the first slide, please. Anyone ready to request the floor? Any ideas or reactions? Um, remember, you'll talk more about this in your breakout groups, but just to, to get us going at this point, any inputs? Um, Yuta is asking if this slide is available. Uh, yes, it's in the repository. Um, and I'm sure that, that Louise will make sure that you can all see it, Yuta. Sylvia, you have the floor. Thank you, Henriette. Um, I, I think that um, having uh, main sessions associated with the work of the tracks is very important. Um, I can see on the proposal for, um, from Roberto and Karim that that is associated with the inclusion track. So it would be really good to add that um, note or that information on the slide yeah. that you have there or information for the, for the MAC members to discuss during the breakouts. Um, the same with the one from data, for example. So that means that uh, there are a couple of uh, sessions that are already uh, in the same spirit of the conversation we had earlier around um, the environment track to have the, those um, those sessions. The, the organization of a main session is is pretty full on, um, it, you know, because it has to have high level speakers and that is a, a challenge. So it is important to, to be open to, to uh, the input of, of more MAC members to assist in that process. And, and that is, um, that is a quite um, a remarkable amount of work that is, is required for that. And I just don't want the, the MAC to, uh, especially the new members, to, to not consider that. Uh, I'm not sure about the the ISOC uh, emerging issues. I, I haven't. I don't think I have. I've seen any document uh, or anything that they have uh, submitted. Normally, uh, main main sessions are proposed by MAC members, so it would be really good to see who from the MAC is uh, a, a pr pr proposing this and on, on what track or how it will uh, work because ISOC will have to work with the MAG in the organization of the session. I don't think it will um, it will work if uh, as a main session if ISOC is not a consultative with the with the MAG in the design of of that main session. Um, and uh, in terms of the introductory and concluding uh, sessions, I, I think that one of the advantages of having it uh, uh, happening online is that there will be more work on the preparatory part. So it will be probably a lot easier to get um, recordings and the, the pitch that, that we did last year for what different topics were going to be covered in different sessions to be able to structure um, a shorter uh, um, session so far it was an hour I think last year so it's, it's, it's kind of like a, a very packed and, and short session and on the on the little draft that I that I shared uh, earlier today one of the proposals that I was thinking was uh, that those sessions could be repeated in different time zones if we go with the idea of the 24 hours so at the introductory and the concluding bits 
are common no matter where you are um, uh, so that that is that 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 link let's say to pitch for sessions and to um, be able to gather the key messages uh, mm -hmm. gives you gives you that that time and then having the a chance a, a little bit more time to come up with the reporting and the the key messages that uh, last year uh, poor women and and women uh, were chasing us uh, for the the, the 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 stability safety stability the SSSR <laughs> track um, it was very difficult to to collect everything and give them uh, to them uh, on time so being online uh, a lot of the documentation, the preparatory work will, will be easier uh, to organize. And I, I think those sessions are very important and they need also uh, MAC volunteers to host them and uh, manage, well, by host them, I mean organize them, not, not the technical part. So to, to convene them and organize them and, and, and think about them. So we had some guidelines done last year and there are some things that could be um, improved, but, but they were very, um, they, again, they are a lot of work. So, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Sylvia. Just to, to, to give you clarification, yes, main sessions are organized by MAG, but I think it's not unusual for in the open consultation process for proposals for main sessions to be made. ISOC um, made this proposal in their input, the pre-recorded input that they provided to the open consultation. And in fact, it's, it, it, I mean, I can't remember it in detail now, but it's not just about emerging issues. It, it might be, you know, one might be able to, uh, to integrate that with, um, with, with some other main session. It's just that I think it's important for the MAG to look at the proposals that were received and to consider whether you can accommodate them in some way or other. So that was, I think it was in the Konstantinos' um, video input that that proposal was made. Um, okay. We have next, we have Ananda, Ben, Yuta, and Timea. Ananda, you go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is Ananda Rajkanal, uh, government stakeholder, MAG member from Nepal. So out of these five uh, suggested uh, possible main sessions, I think the first one, the definitive committed actions for connecting and enabling the remaining billions, this uh, issue has been greatly accepted by most of the countries in the world through different, uh, you know, uh, UN agencies like ITU and other agencies. Uh, and uh, it has already come in terms of different ITU resolutions. So I don't think that uh, it requires further uh, discussions uh, in the Internet Governance Forum as a main session. So yes, uh, digital cooperation and the uh, Secretary General's report uh, on the roadmap for digital cooperation is a very timely topic that uh, should be discussed uh, as a main session. Uh, emerging, emerging issues uh, related to internet governance is, is quite acceptable. A uh, role of the internet in emergency situation though has been uh, widely discussed. Uh, there are reports from ITU, but the fo special focus on the pandemic uh, could be an interesting topic uh, to be discussed. And yes, of course, the workshop session 229 uh, has been accepted uh, by most of the members uh, for the main session. Besides that, uh, it is my strong feeling that at least there should be, uh, you know, some kind of over, uh, overview of the four main tracks in the main session that covers the entire gamut of issues that will be discussed through different forums like workshop or NRIs or uh, BPFs and all those things. Uh, these four tracks should be included. That is my feeling for the main session. Thank you. Yes, I think particularly if there are many workshops, it's really important that they feed into the tracks, into giving participants a sense of these are the themes and this is what's, you know, what, what went into those themes and what's coming out of them. And next we have Ben. Um, thank you, Henriette. And thanks to the Secretariat for um, already drawing up the slide for us to look at today. And I, I won't go into topics that should be covered by the main sessions because presumably that's something you want us to spend time on during the, the breakouts. Um, 
I guess it was just to try and get a little more sense of um, what we're looking to achieve. Um, so specifically, um, the number of sessions. Um, I, I agree it makes sense to have one identified with each of the four tracks. Um, I already supported the idea of having some kind of session on the IGF plus elements of the roadmap. Um, I wonder whether there are now guaranteed slots for NRIs and DCs. I know that's something that's evolved over the last couple of years. So um, do we make sure, I, I guess this all kind of feeds in, is there, a, is there a number that we're aiming towards? Is it 10, is it eight? Um, and are some of those slots already taken up, um, for example, by NRIs, DCs, um, the agreement to already have a main session on that inclusion topic that Roberto and Karima proposed. Um, so it might be that we've got a limited number of slots to fill. So that, that was kind of part of the, part of the question. Um, another thing, and maybe you want us to discuss this, but um, the length of the main sessions has varied over the last few years. And uh, I think we got a bit like a three bears and Goldilocks situation because three years ago, they were three hours long and that was felt too long. Two years ago, um, it was a, it was a compressed schedule, so they were 90 minutes, 80 minutes long, and that was felt too short. And last year they were two hours long, and that felt just about right. So uh, I don't know whether we should discuss length of sessions or if that's already been decided as well. Um, yeah, so partly questions for mm -hmm. clarification and guidance on uh, what you want us to focus on in the breakout sessions. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Ben. That's very useful actually because I think. Um, at least two of the things that you've just said stand out for me as useful for you to talk about in your breakout session. And that would be the number of main sessions that you feel are realistic. And then the length of time. You've, you've all been in online meetings a lot. So you can speak about uh, the length of, of, of what a main session should be from experience. We know that main sessions are tough in the IGF. They don't always work well. So that's all very useful. And yes, please do pick up on those things in your breakout groups. On the NRI, the status of the NRI session, Shengatai, can you just update us on that? It's, I mean, my understanding is that it, I know that there has been um, some dissent around that in some years, but it has become the standard part of the IGF. Uh, that's my understanding, that there is an NRI main session. Chigatai, can you just um, reflect on that, please? Yes, exactly. I mean, the, the NRIs have become a very large part of the um, IGF intersessional process, uh, so to speak. And over the last four years, they have had a main session. Um, yes, it is true that um, not all MAG members have always been 100% in agreement that they should have a main session. Um, but the ones that I have attended, I think I've attended all of them, in fact, have been uh, very well attended. And also there's, it's just one of those ways of integrating the NRIs into the uh, main global IGF, which we've been asked to do through various um, resolutions and recommendations. Yeah, that, that's my understanding as well. I know that there's still some issues around that, but I think that uh, that doesn't mean MAG can't give creative input into how yeah. those mm -hmm. sessions are managed. But I do think it has become a mechanism that is used to help integrate uh, the NRIs um, with the global IGF. Mm. Um, Jutta. Yes, thank you, Andriette, for giving me the floor. Jutta Koll, um, MAC member in my third year for civil society. I'm from Germany. Uh, first of all, I'm speaking uh, in my capacity as a co-facilitator for the Dynamic Coalitions, and I wanted to add to the list uh, the main session proposal that the Dynamic Coalitions already issued during open consultations with our presentation. Uh, Dynamic Coalitions are working on that main session proposal uh, led by Sivas, and I hope that in, in the next uh, MAG meeting uh, or MAG uh, call, uh, Dynamic Coalitions will be able to present that 
Um, I also think that um, given the fact that we have now a list of 86 workshops in four different tracks, uh, but still I do think not all mem MAG members have had the opportunity to have a look at all those uh, workshop proposals that are now provisionally accepted in the tracks that they have not been working on. Uh, so I just managed to uh, assess my 50 and then the other 49 in the second trust or first trust group. But I have not had uh, the time yet to, to look at the proposals in inclusion data and environment. But given the fact that we want to have uh, main sessions uh, related to these four tracks, we need to identify how this gets together with the overview on these uh, uh, proposals accepted for the tracks on the one hand, and then what would be a good complementary uh, theme to be addressed in the main session in, in the respective track. And then we also need an overview on all the four tracks and the main sessions that come together there, right? See a bit, maybe it's an over-focus uh, initiated by the current situation of the pandemic, but we have lots of workshop proposals and we have also uh, suggestions for main sessions that are dealing with the pandemic and, and the outcomes. I do think we need to bring that together, not to be uh, redundant in, in the main session issues. Uh, and so therefore I do think if we could, uh, of course we will have our breakout sessions and we will continue discussion tomorrow but I do think we still need some time, maybe till our next meeting takes place. Jennifer has already suggested that it's a bit more than the two hours that we usually do. And then we can go into more details of that main session program to make it, it cohesive and consistent with uh, the workshop session program. So to bring it together. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Jutta. And, and it's good ideas with that. Um, Tamea. Thank you. Um, and I, I realized that much of what I wanted to say was already been said, so I will try to be very, very brief. But um, I just wanted to quickly raise a couple of um, procedural questions. I don't know if that to the chair or to the group or to the secretariat. Um, but I, I'm a bit unclear on um, on the process we will be following um, to select main sessions. Um, what, what does a proposal constitute? Are, are we throwing out any ideas in the next uh, hour? Or are we just con consulting this? Um, are these proposals already taken on board as, as viable um, options for the MAC to consider? Because they all come through very different inputs. Some have been suggested uh, a year ago, some have been suggested um, as a title, some have been suggested just now for us to lift up from, from workshops that I don't think we've done before. We don't also, we don't know if the workshop proposal would, proponent would be okay with handing over their idea to the MAG to run with it. Um, so I'm just trying to um, understand what is the right way uh, for us to approach these topics. Um, what can we take on board? How much can we add to this? A um, couple, couple of guidelines on that would be very helpful. Um, and then, of course, just want to echo the, um, what, what Yuta just said and, and Jennifer said before and, and others um, that we need to think about this uh, in relation to, to the rest of it. Um, and and what, what, is a, what is a main session? What is an intro session? What is a, a, a highlight? Um, I think we need to think about those as well. Um, also in terms of numbers, but also, um, also in terms of... Uh, just cohesion of the program. Thank you. Thanks to Mayor, and I'll try and clarify as much as I can. Natasha. Uh, hello everyone, Natasha Glavar from Croatia, representing government uh, stakeholder group for third year in MAC. Uh, I just wanted to, to clarify on, um, I think about the uh, opening and closing uh, plenary sessions of the conference. Uh, do we have any information about that part of the program, or is it something uh, that uh, that that we should uh, provide as suggestion? Is it something that we should uh, discuss in our breakout uh, sessions in the, uh, today or tomorrow? <clears throat> 
So, so that would that would be uh, my question. Thanks, Natasha. Thanks for asking that. That's really important, actually. And I don't see anyone else um, requesting the floor. And um, is that I see the little no one else and um, no one else. Okay, so we need to now prepare for the breakout session. So in fact, it's very helpful to to have this input and I'll try and to the best of my ability um, help with giving you some, some, some guidelines. And of course, you as your groups, you have, you have flexibility, you can raise different issues. So I think firstly, in terms of number, I think, you know, you obviously can't come up with, with it's difficult to address number um, when you don't know what the overall design is going to be like. But on the other hand, you all know the IGF and you know that or most of you have been at an IGF. And, and so what does your gut feel about what is a, a, a limit? You know, we know, we, we know from experience that too many main sessions um, don't work. But we also now have a slightly different format. So just to keep that in mind. But yes, if each group can just talk a little bit about what you would feel comfortable with uh, in terms of a number of sessions. And now next, I want to come to in introductory and concluding sessions. You know, are they main sessions or are they going to be different? So just, just to think about how you want to handle them. Sylvia has already made some suggestions. Um, so I think that's the other thing, just to look at um, the introductory and concluding sessions and how you think we can approach them in the light of the fact that we have these four themes and that we have a virtual IGF. Then other topics, um, considering you know, other topics for main sessions. We have the topics that emerged from the open consultation, um, which is the roadmap topic and the COVID-19 topic and the, the ISOC proposal for looking at, um, at emerging approaches to policy making. And you're going to have to go and look at their proposal or someone would, or maybe we can send you a summary. Um, but you don't have to be exhausted. I think just look at those other topics. You've got the, the topic that was proposed by the MAG, um, the one on um, committed actions for connecting and enabling the remaining billions. Um, think about that. Maybe that fits with inclusion. I don't know. You know, you need to decide how to deal with that. And then you have the, um, the data um, sessions um, proposal. And maybe it would be helpful for, 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 you know, for everyone to just have a look at, or at, at 2 to 9, at workshop 2 to 9. Or Maria Paz, if you want to say why you think your Chennai, if you want to explain why you think it would be good. And then we had the proposal from today, which is to look at environment. And now again, would that be a, a part of the, the track um, proposal? So, so let me try and summarize. You want to look at number overall, um, what you feel is realistic, what you feel comfortable with. You want to look at topics and um, drawing on the tracks and on other topics that have been put on the table in one way or another. Um, you want to take uh, into account that the high level sessions will focus on the pandemic. And you want to take into account that the NRI main session is going to focus on emerging situations. So, 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 so there are those to work with. And then um, finally, I think you also want to look um, at the dynamic coalition proposal, which we don't have uh, in detail yet, but um, keep that in mind. And then we want to, at the end, I'd like you to come up with idea. Oh, sorry, I'm adding Natasha's uh, input. Talk about opening and closing sessions. How, how would you like to see this happening? Um, it might be very nice to have a, for a virtual IGF, to have a opening plenary and a closing plenary. So, so, so think about that. We want to give people a sense of being part of a big event. And then the last thing I'd like you to look at in your, your breakout groups is next steps. Um, how should we go about this? You have experience from last year, um, um, all the old MAG members, where you worked in, in thematic groups to prepare um, the, the sessions. Um, so if you can come up with proposals of what the next step should be, and what the working method should be for us to take this process of organizing main sessions forward. 
So let me try and summarize. Numbers, topics, introductory and concluding sessions and how they relate to topical main sessions, opening and closing plenaries or main sessions, and next steps. So those are sort of five areas that I'd like you to discuss in your, in your groups. Is there anything that I'm overlooking? Um, if I may, again, yes, <laughs> Henriette, uh, the DC's proposal was presented and it's in the presentation that uh, might also be in the repository so that I would like to draw the attention from the th uh, four breakout groups also to that. It's not only the NRIs, but also the DC's proposal, just to mention. Good. So you. we should, you know, Yuta, what we can do is we'll add it to this slide, which just summarize all the proposals and then, and then we'll update it. We'll refresh this and this document Fine. will be in the repository. Wonderful, thank you. Thanks, so Secretariat, if you can, can please get going with that. So, Madam Chair. yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to ask if uh, the Secretariat already have the link to the proposal that, that Karina Mann and I prepared or you prefer to share it in this chat? I think the proposal is already in the, the repository. Okay, if it's already, thank you. And, and my understanding, and I checked with the Secretariat on this, is that the MAG has already approved this. So this is, so here the MAG will want to give input and, sh and help you shape this main session. So I think, but the fact that there will be a main session, my understanding was that that has been approved already. So if people want to revisit that decision, you'll have to be explicit in your breakout groups uh, that you want to revisit that, that um, decision. Uh, Chair? Okay. Uh, Go ahead, Susan. Okay. Hello, everybody. Susan Chalmers from uh, NTIA, U.S. Department of Commerce. Uh, just a few questions, and please forgive me if I, I missed this <coughs> already. Um, but is so it's my understanding that the the suggestions for possible main sessions that there are there is information about these suggestions on the igf website in the repository is that correct susan yes there's a it's being updated now but there's a there's a slide um the file name is um, I can't really see, but it's called IJF 2020 Received Suggestions for Possible Main, main Sessions. Okay. Susan, uh, Susan since yes. you're on the phone, we can send them to you um, via email to, to make it easier for you. Send to Susan okay? and if there's anything else. Thank you, else, Tangatai. And Susan, that just summarizes um, the suggestions that came through the open consultation, the suggestions that the MAG raised, um, and then the NRI Dynamic Coalition um, and, and the, the Data Workshop Evaluation Group have a proposal. And then the proposal for okay. Amendment 1 that came out um, of the discussion this morning. So that's all there is at the moment. Okay. But really be open-minded when you approach this. You don't have to, um, you know, you can be creative um, about how you okay. think. Okay. Thank you. And I have a follow-up question. I don't want to put too much distance between um, um, the the lovely list that you just enumerated about main sessions and openings and closings, um, but relatedly, and again, please forgive me if this has already been addressed today. Um, my questions are, my question regards the the high level sessions. Given that we don't have a host country and the host country plays a, a role in in those types of main sessions, the high level sessions. Um, should we be factoring that that space into account at all when we're discussing main sessions, or are we just discussing main sessions without without uh, constraint at this point in terms of scheduling? Um, I think it is worth taking it into account, but we have very little information at this point, and you know you cannot take into account what you don't know yet in terms of mm -hmm. scheduling. What we do know, and I want to invite Shengatai or Waiman um, to, to, if they are with us, if Waiman, if you're with us, just to say a little bit more, 
but the idea is that it will be looking at um, at internet governance um, um, issues in the context of emergency um, situations. Why men are you still with us? Are, do you do you mind just giving the mag a very quick initial update on what the thinking is about the high level sessions? Or if you're not with us, why men Shangatai, could you please? Um, I'm not saying that you you should plan around this, but I think it's useful for you to hear what um, you and Dessa's thinking is at the moment. <coughs> Great, so, thank you. Um, uh, Andrea, uh, thanks. Thanks, Susan. Um, this is Wai Mingkwok, you and Dessa. Uh, I, I will just give a brief and I also like uh, Changatai to, to add on in case I miss out anything. Uh, because, and, and I must first say that this is uh, still very much uh, in, a, in a thinking process uh, about how we can go about doing it. The, um, the high level session, since the UN is the host, we also like to, to bring um, the UN agencies, but not only UN agencies, but also other IGO um, that include both intergovernmental and also non intergovernmental. <clears throat> so, so that's one. And there's a, the other perspective is on uh, COVID-19, which I know that there's been discussion on that already in uh, looking at emergencies. Uh, but COVID-19, it, it can fall under emergency, it's, but uh, we all know that it will be so-called a new normal or we are already in the new normal. So, so there are actually different, different, different work and different uh, perspectives uh, by, by, by a number of uh, uh, international organizations. So that's, that's, that's one part involving UN agencies and other IGO. Um, the other part that we like to, to bring in is also to some of these uh, regional, uh, regional priorities or regional centric issues. Um, for example, um, just uh, I think uh, you know or you know better than me that connectivity is, is, a, is, is, a, is a higher priority as compared to other regions, not that it's not important in other regions. So uh, likewise, security can be in some regions or some sub-regions. So we like to also to, to, to get the UN regional commissions and with other uh, regional organizations like African Union uh, in Africa, for example. Then the other, another, another dimension to the high-level discussion is that we also like to see how we can, we can, we can give some uh, uh, enhanced role of visibility to the future host country. That include, of course, uh, our colleagues at, 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 in Poland as well as in Ethiopia because we also we have started discussion with them uh, since earlier part of this year in planning for the IGF in, in Addis Ababa. Next year, of course, this is happening in 2022 and uh, our future host Japan is also very much like to be on board. So we like to see how they can also be involved or to be, uh, to be, to be at, at least uh, their priorities to be also be somehow to be reflected. But of course, it will not be just the host country. Uh, it is actually there has to be a global dimension to it. And we will see on how, on if it's appropriate to get also the, the past host country, the former host country uh, as part of the high level session as well, especially in terms of uh, attracting uh, the high level participants that include ministers and, 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 and other uh, prominent persons. Um, I will stop here and I, I will ask Chengatai to add if I miss out anything. Thanks, uh, thanks, Andre. Okay. Yes, um, just adding uh, to what Waimin has said, I think he's uh, done a very comprehensive job in explaining. Um, we will, it, it's not just governments and the UN that we're think, thinking about for the high level sessions. It's going to be multi stakeholder. So we will be um, asking for the input from, from the other stakeholder groups. So we will be inviting as well the civil society leaders and also business leaders. So um, just um, to make that clear. Um, the other thing um, for the opening and closing sessions, uh, yes, um, the, the MAG can make suggestions and they're welcome um, to make suggestions, that's good. Uh, but uh, as the UN is the host, is, is playing the host, um, uh, those are, the opening and closing sessions are being facilitated by the UN um, a, a, as such. I hope that makes that clear. Um, I think that's all, unless somebody's got any questions. Again, we will be developing um, 
this idea, fleshing this idea out more, and we'll be sharing it with the MAG. And we do intend to actually showcase the global nature of the IGF. So with the possibility of actually also getting our national and regional initiatives involved and also the um, organizations internationally as well um, with these high level sessions and coming up with um, basically a com compendium of um, internet governance related issues on the COVID-19 crisis as such. Again, as I said, I won't say that much since we're still formulating um, the idea. Thanks, Wei Min, and thanks, Shengatai. So what I see is uh, MAG members um, asking for input documents. Um, I think, uh, um, you know, Shengatai always advises us not to get hung up on documents. But um, Secretariat, if you can, um, just make sure that the MAG, maybe if we can distribute um, in one message to, to MAG members, the workshop 229, well, it's a public document, um, the summary discussions of the open consultation so that they um, have some text on the proposal from ISOC and the proposal on um, the digital cooperation roadmap um, and this slide that we have here. Um, which we need to update so that it also reflects the dynamic coalition proposal. And then, um, and then and Karim and Roberto's proposal, which um, should be online. But, but Secretariat, I'm sorry to, to add this to your workload, but just to make it easier for the MAG members to have access to, yeah, to all the reference mm -hmm. documents. So are there any other questions? Are we ready to, to break? I'm sure people are tired because we've been working without a break. And I see Titi saying, yes, please. Uh, Titi, is that for, for breaking or for something else? Um, I'm just checking the chat. Um, so on this note, I don't see any further requests for the floor. So I am drawing this um, plenary to a close. I'm wishing everyone very well for your breakout groups. I'll send an email to the MAG list just with a reminder of, of what we would like to get out of these groups. But at the same time, um, don't feel pressured. If, you, if your discussion goes um, into a different direction, that's fine, as long as you report that back to us so that we can all benefit from that. Um, you will go into your breakout sessions in your pre-assigned groups and time slots. Um, and you need to get the Zoom details, um, which have been made available in, in various places. And, and that's the end of the second last day of the 2020 second MAG and Open Consultations. And um, just checking the agenda here. Tomorrow we start at 12.30 UTC. And we hopefully will have a relatively short session tomorrow. And I'm sure you're all exhausted, but we are nearly at the end of this marathon of meetings. And so thanks again to all the groups and the facilitators and the rapporteurs, to the secretariat, to the captioners, and, um, and to um, who, who might have left because we're running over time, um, and to everyone who's helped make this possible. Um, good luck with your groups and see you tomorrow. Thank you, thank you and Henriette. And thank you, everybody. Thank you, Henriette. Bye bye. Thank you. See you soon. Thanks, Madam bye Chair. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Henriette, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks, thank you all. everyone. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye, Bye, and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, everyone. Bye, 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 bye. It's so nice to hear all this. It's like all the children have been let loose. The meeting is over. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Happy to see you. Bye. Thank you for that guy, I'm going to